All right, peace. I'm here with Renee, and uh, we're having a discussion here about the language. So, before we get into the language, um, I want to ask you: um, Is there a, someone, an elder in the community, that um, inspired you or gave you an interest to further study into uh, the relationships that you find with the words? Um, I don't have like an, an, an elder or. Or anybody to inspire me. I, I, I think that there was a, actually there was a page. Um, I think it was a revitalization of the language on Facebook, and I saw that people were referencing the languages of what a Taino, Taino word of the day. Um, I was like, oh, this is interesting. I like this. So uh, that kind of gave me the, the the inspiration to search words. And in my opinion, I believe that like the French guy, I think he, he said this. I think his name was Jack. Uh, Doretta, he said that with language, if you trace the languages, you can have a better perception of the world and how everything has a connection to it. You know? And I think that in language, if you do the same thing in language, with language, you can connect, you can make the connections. And that's just my opinion. That's the same. That's the best. Um, I see. I, I can see what you're saying. That what what you're saying there, because from my understanding, just from archaeology, you know. <clears throat> with the language and, you know this is me expressing my opinion on this you know it's going to help us to uh, see the bigger picture in how you know everything connects in relations with the culture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like I know <clears throat> uh, Taino is a broad term a broad archaeological term that uh, the, the modern uh, academic community used to describe a community but um, we know, like you know, there's a layer of uh, uh, you could say uh, dialects that relates to um, the Taino. Like you know, we have Macorigs, we have the Sibone, the Siwayos, you know. <clears throat> so like, um, what's what's your take on uh, these relationships? Um, according, according to my research. Um, the Macoris from DR and Siguayo and the Sibone and uh, Guanajatabe from Cuba. Uh, the Sibone was the old Taino, they just spoke a different dialect. You know, it's now it's no different than Spanish, French, and Italian. It's all the same, you know, Latin, but it's the same thing, you know what I mean? It's just different it's a different branch of a di it's dialects. Um <clears throat> what what's uh what's interesting is that according to my research they say that the Sibone and Siguayo and Macoris are, are native to Dominican Republic and some of our Cuba. But what they don't say is that it's a possibility they were also native to Puerto Rico. Because the, there's a town, like the Macoris for example, there's a town called Morocovi. And apparently the word Morocovi can possibly derive from the, 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 the people Macoris because the, the spelling is different and the sound, the pronunciation is very similar too. So that's one. That's another theory. And another theory is that the Sibone also were uh, possibly native in Puerto Rico, but there's still more research in that, and that's because the word Duho and the Sibone language is uh, their their language is goes back to the Tongan people from uh, Central America, and um, according to, to linguists, the the Duho is not actually a Taino language. It actually is a uh, a Wario people. Uh, the language Wario, and uh, uh, I, I forgot what it is, Sibone or Siguayo, I'm probably confusing it a little bit because they both start with a C, it's one of them, but the Duho is, uh, I think it's Siguayo or Sibone, but then their language is derived from the Wairo language, which classic Taino from Puerto Rico is also derived from uh, the Wairo people, and Duho is actually a Wairo people, and the word Duho derives from the Wairo, Wairo language, the Wairo word, Duho, which means stool, and the Wahido language, the, the, the Wahido words, the Duhu, comes from another native tribe from South America, I forgot the name, called Tulu, which means a bench. So according to archaeologists, they think that it's, since they come, both people come from South America, there was a possibility they must have, they must have encountered each other, and maybe one culture uh, derived that, 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 that uh, the word Duhu 
yeah. as of uh, like a trait of uh, spirituality in, in some sort. Okay. You can say. Yeah. So <clears throat> what I see with what you have here, um, this isn't um, an analogy, an analogy of using correspondences to find the relationships between one opposition towards another. Mm -hmm. Like for example, uh, uh, I know you were talking about Nitaino. Mm -hmm. you know, let's get into that for a bit. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> to some people, uh, like uh, George Estevez, uh, I think me, some, not only George Estevez, but other people too, but I think in my opinion, I don't think the Tainos refer themselves, I don't think the word Taino is a, is a, is a word to, the, to describe them as a tribe. Um, it actually, Taino comes, derives from the word Ni Taino, which means my people, it can mean my blood or my relatives. And the reason is, is that some people think that the word Ni Taino, uh, it doesn't mean my blood or my relatives. But according to the Chronicles, I, I think when Christopher Columbus encountered the Tainos, he had an interpreter. And he asked them, where are you, who are you, where are you from? And they said, Ni uh, Taino, you know, meaning my, these are my people, you know. But to some people, they don't think that Ni Taino is the, the they, didn't, they don't think that they call themselves Ni Taino because they don't, the Tainos never use the N as a first person. That they call themselves D Taino because they they follow the Lakona way, which is the D. They use the D as a first person. I've I've never I've never seen anything like with a D or any research. I've never seen that that term D Taino. I heard a Daka. It's possible they called they took the D from the word Daka, like Daka Daka Taino. But it's possible they call themselves Daka. It's possible they say Daka Ni Taino. I am Ni Taino or something. But according to my research, I, I did some research in the word Ipe. To some South American uh, South American tribes, it means red or blood. And uh, in Garufana, they say hita, which is H I T A U. And they also use the word nita, which means my blood. Both both uh, words mean my blood. And the Locono, they say ite, which is I T E, which means red or blood. But another word. Uh, from South America, try Ita, A I T A means blood. Now, if you look at the word Ni Taino, N I T A I A N, you see the word Ita in the middle of the word. So it makes sense that they call themselves my blood relatives. And according to the to the, uh, the linguist, the Garufano named Ruben Reyes, he found that very interesting, and uh, he traced it his his uh, uh, definition, Ni Taino or Nita to be very similar to Ni Tahino. And what's another interesting is that in Guajiro language, they use another they use another word called Nu Taino, which means my son. In Guajiro, they say Ni Sani, which means my son. Very similar to Ni Tahino, which means my people or my blood or my blood relatives. So if you look at it, it makes a lot of sense. You can see the comparisons, you know. It's just, it's just a theory, it's not a fact, but it's, a possible, it's something that I think everybody should look into because uh, if, if, if you do your research and you look at it, it makes a lot of sense. You know? yeah, just so people can get a better understanding of that, um, if, if you can, I would like to get on your comment mm -hmm. on the YouTube video that was showing the relationship between the Wahai, the Wahiro and the Garifuna. Mm -hmm. like, what was your take on that? Well, I think that was a, a beautiful video because it shows no. you that the influence from the Wahido language uh, in that Garufana is very, very similar, you know. Uh, a, good, a, good, a good example, uh, I forgot one of the words I did trace, and the Wahido say the same thing as well as the, the uh, uh, it's Nutani, i give you an example. You spell N-U-T-A-N-I, Wahido or Nisani, it's very similar, and they both mean my son. This is the Wahido, which means my son. Nitani, and uh, no, this is yeah Wahido language, and this is Garufana, Nisani. So you can see how similar they are. It's the same. You know? I mean, the word or the sound might have changed during down the time, but 
you can see the relation. I think that's that's a perfect example how the influence of uh, the Wahido and the Garufa is um, occurred in the Caribbean, you know, especially in, in, in Taino language too. I, I love that. I think that's a uh, everybody should see that video if you really want to research the language of Tainos or, or Wahido. You want to try to put the connect all the dots with the languages. I think you should watch that video. It's a very good video. Um, this just came into my mind also, just so people can uh, get a clear understanding. Um, if you can explain your take on the interest between the Garifuna and the Taino. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, uh, the interest? Like as far as, you know, uh, the comparison as far as with the words. You know, oh, like the words? Um... I think, uh, according to to my research, the the Carib will will because Garufano is the Caribs, you know, they, right. they, they speak Carib. But according to my research, the, the Caribs will uh, take the Taino wives, and the the wives are, were bilingual, so they would speak Carib to the husband, and they would speak Taino to the son or the kids. And so some of the words passed on, you know, and some of the words were mixed with Carib and Taino. Example. Uh, in, in Puerto Rico, we see there's a tiny fish, very tiny, like very mosquito fish. It's, you catch them with a net, and there's only in, there's a town in called Arecibo, which is very known to catching these fish, and it's called Sati. And Sati is very, very tiny, and you gotta catch them with a mosquito net. And Pua, they call it Teti, right? Now, in Kaurufana, they say Fegi. So, you see how the language is. I mean, in Seti, you can spell it S-E-T-I. And Garufa, let us spell it F-E-G-I. So you see the similarities. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, too, is that the word for net, when you fish, and, and, and uh, there's two, actually, there's, there's a few uh, words. You can say Kapuya, which is a, a fishing line. The Nasa is the, the net to, to catch the fish. But the Dainas would use the hammock, because the hammock was also used as a net, too. You can, you can imagine that picture. Now, the, in Garufuna, they say for net, we say Nasa, but in Garufuna, they say Neti, which means for net. Now, they also say uh, Senti, sen which is for fishing net. So you see how the word for fish we have in, in Taino, Seti, the Taino fishing, and they use a fishing net called Senti. You can see there. It's mm. mix. very interesting. If you if you if you look at it really clear. So um, for the youth that are coming up, what um sources of material would you recommend them to read to learn about the language from from your studies and um, research? I would say go look into the Arawak language, like buy books on Arawak language. I, I have one on the, it's an Oxford uh, language of the Waina. If you look into the um, northern uh, languages like Wahiro, uh, Dariano, uh, Hapoko people, and uh, of course, uh, uh, but the difference is in Carib. So you have Carib in South America, but to archaeologists, they. <coughs> To separate the Caribs from the islands in the Caribbean, they call them island Carib. And the people from South America, they just call them Carib. See, in Taino, they call them island, ta island Arawak, but in South America, they just call them Arawak because the language is kind of, they, they, they changed over time, that's the reason why. But I would say buy books on uh, Arawak, uh, learn about the Wahido language, trace that, and uh, buy, uh, uh, buy books on uh, the, the Barufana. And read this book called uh, well, by Rafael Bido if you want to learn about the Taino language. And also read books on, uh, there's a book I've read for the pre Columbian of the language, I believe. Oh, you, I think you. Cranberry? Lang yeah. It's Languages of the Pre Columbian Antilles. That's the one, yes. Very good material to start. Yes, yeah, that's, very. that's one of the ones. That's actually one of the best I, I recommend. And the Arawak one. And also a uh, Wahido language, the Wahido book by Ruben Reyes. If you buy that book, you can see the connections. You know? That's what I do. I just I get the meaning of the word in Taino and I trace it in in the Garufuna, and I also try to trace the same meaning in the Wahido language, as well as the uh, 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 the uh, 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 
the Popoco people as well and the, the Doriano people. So that's, that's what's interesting. I'll tell you right for example, like Gachi means son. And in Wahido, they say Kahi means son. And to the Taino, Kachi means moon. So Wehi means sun. So you see what I mean? It's mm. different different meaning, but they're both celestial celestial objects. You see what I mean? So that's what's interesting. Well, well this has definitely been an eye opener. Mm -hmm. uh, I think perhaps in the future we definitely need to do uh, a follow up. But I believe, in my view, this is a uh, an important dialogue to open uh, to spark um, interest to our community to uh, to study. But I also believe, most importantly, when we are given the information to our people, we have to uh, give them the materials to resource themselves, you know, because uh, using the perspective of spirituality, you know, like, we, we came through a rough uh, cycle, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of uh, over 500 years cycle of oppression, so, That's right. so when it comes to this area, this is a very sensitive area, mm -hmm. so we have to be as patient and honest with our people as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, sharing your um, your research with us. So with that, I say peace, and uh, we'll see you again soon next time. I would like to add one more thing. Yeah, you ask. Um, right. I, I just forgot to mention about the word Taino. In my opinion, like I said, I don't think they call themselves Tainos. Right. I believe different people from the island, like the Lucayans, uh, the, uh, uh, the Caribs, or uh, the Tainos from Borinquen, and Kiskeya, I believe they used the term whatever the island they were in. For example, Lucayans, they call themselves Lucayans because the island they were in, Lucayo, because Luc means, means people, and Cayo means island, so they mean they were the people of the island. So when Christopher Columbus who they were, asked who they were, they said, we were Kayan, the people from the island. So like in Tainos from Puerto Rico, they were Boricuas. We use that term today. And Boricua means native to the island. Mm. And Borinquen means violent people of the island. Mm. So I think that we never, because as far as my understanding, when I asked my, my great uncle, aunts, they never heard of the word Taino. And they're like 90s. They heard of Indio. So if Taino, the word existed, down or tradition, they would have remembered that term Taino. So they remember Boricua, and Boricua is a, a native word. Right. Bori means worker. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, it's just my opinion, and it's just it's just my thing. Yeah, know? I definitely see what yeah. you're talking yeah. about. You yeah. know, these are just little things that just yeah. has to be um, thoroughly reviewed, in my mm -hmm. view. Exactly. So you know, yeah. I, I think those were good points that you pointed yeah. out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But thanks. All right. So with that, I say peace.